Alrighty, everybody. So this is going to be a quick intro into enums and state machines. It's something that you're going to have to get used to using quite a bit as time goes on um, because it's just generally how developers, you know, go about building uh, enemies, um, certain characters, you know, they use them all over the place, really. Like you can state machines are littered throughout your uh, every game you play. And generally those are driven by enums or some other kind of system that delineates what uh, part of the code should be running. So we're going to get into that this real quick. You should see um, uh, my red guy right here. Sorry, OBS was acting a little bit weird there for a second. My red guy right here. And if I hit play, we should see him start going around a path. He goes across these different areas and he just keeps going and going and going and going. If you haven't watched the coroutine section um, yet, in my videos, I would suggest doing that because I do generally tend to make uh, uh, my state machines run off of coroutines. But you'll notice he's currently in a patrol state. You can see I have this variable here called patrol. Now I'm going to walk up to it and I have the state driven so that when I get close enough, he enters a follow state. And Rue's going to jump off the cliff and get a hopefully away. And if we look over here, he'll return back to his patrol state. And you'll see that that is dictated by this enum which you might be thinking well i don't know what an enum is yet i'm gonna pause this um and that's absolutely okay what i would suggest is go ahead and make a uh i named it basic follow enemy you can go ahead and name it whatever you like um but uh make a script and make a new game object uh the game object i hear is just a simple circle you know you hit right click uh right click 2d sprites circle and you go ahead and give it a collider, a rigid body, just so that we can make sure we get collisions. Um, well, actually, I take that back. You don't really need either of these for right now because we're not going to get into any attacking or anything like that. This isn't an AI lecture. It's just simply an enum and state machine lecture. Um, this is... Uh, 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 you can go ahead and just add this basic follow enemy and, or you know whatever you name your script. And obviously, you won't have all these variables, but we're going to go in in a minute and... Uh, build this out so the let me minimize some of these bits here so we don't get distracted with them i'm actually going to delete this and delete this all righty so the first things first we are going to look into what is an enum I'm just going to get rid of all this put it down here and zoom in here an enum is simply a variable you make. It's just a, a, a variable. You give it the type name, and then you give it all the values it can be. These are generally words or terms that make it very easy to understand. Uh, you can see, and the way that we make an enum is by saying public or private or protected or however you want to do it. Um, enum, and then the name of the enum. So this is enemy state. I could name it enemy behavior state. I can name it whatever I want. Just something that makes sense to you. Now, then we do these curly braces. They open up and let us go ahead and say, what are the options that this state can be? So I have start, patrol, and follow. All right. And that then we need to actually, this sets up what the enum can be. This is keeping track of what an instance of that enum is on this script so we're keeping track of the enemy state and i named it my state okay this is going to make a little bit more sense in just a moment but if i come over to unity it's got to reload because i changed some stuff you'll notice that i have my state that's what we were watching when we were um uh seeing the care the um enemy move around and change states right so I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. It looks like I have some errors in here. Let me just check that real quick. I'm pretty sure. Yep, here it is. Uh, Excellent. Okay, we'll get into that in just a moment. So we're going to ignore all these variables for the time being. But the first things first for an enemy, I guess we will get into a little bit of enemy logic here. Um, well, obviously we want it to know about the player. So I simply went ahead and tagged my player player and went ahead and found it on start. Pretty simple. 
Um, one of the common uses for... There's the other errors. I knew there were more. Common uses for update is to regularly evaluate what state should we be in, right? Um, so right now, this enemy, let's just take it a step back for get code, is all dependent on how close the player is to them. When they are far away, the player, the enemy should be on its patrol path. When the enemy, or when the player is close, the uh, enemy should be uh, chasing the player until they get until the player gets far away enough and then it should return back to its patrol path so right now we have a couple variables we need to pay attention to we obviously need our player i'm going to say go ahead and write this public coroutine current behavior because it's going to keep track of what the pl uh, player should currently be doing and then we need these three variables here start follow distance um actually i don't know that we need this anymore no we do uh and start you know what? no we don't actually take that back we're i'm just going to change this up real quick and this should be less than start follow distance ah, this is when i was making it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be for the sake of this tutorial and then we'll need a patrol speed and a follow speed now i'm going to go ahead and um comment out some code here again don't worry about this just for the moment this is going to simply say hey if the current distance that's one of the variables we made up here the current distance is equal to the distance between the player and this game object's position should be pretty simple it's going to go ahead and check that then we're going to check to say, hey, if the current distance is greater than the follow distance and my state is not patrol, let's update the state to patrol. Because that's all this is doing right now. We can ignore this bit here. Um, we just go ahead and say that, actually, we can go ahead and just comment all this out for the time being. We can go ahead and say, it's going to let me, uh, it's not going to. Okay. Update behavior is simply changing the state okay and this is really what a state machine is it's a very scary sounding concept but it's a very simple thing in practice right as long as you know what should drive the states it should be fairly simple so on start we go ahead and say hey yeah, let's yes let's get the player then in update we go ahead and say hey let's always check to figure out what the distance is uh, between us and the player if they are greater than our follow distance and we are not on patrol we should set it to patrol and otherwise if they are uh less than the follow distance and current distance oh, i already had that here Whoop. let's delete that less than or equal to the follow distance and we're not in the follow code or we're not in a follow state we should update it to follow now with everything i commented out we won't see the enemy actually move anymore but we should be able to track and see the um da, 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 the states change as i get closer so let's go ahead and run up to them rue let's go running we switch to follow and we switch to, switch to patrol now this only works because i set my start follow distance to 10 so we'll see as soon as i move a little bit i'm just going to edge closer to it da, 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 da. as soon as i get under 10 i'm in the follow state and as soon as I come out and go over 10, I'm on the patrol state. So now let's go and actually do some actions with this. We've um, already done a little bit with coroutines before. I'm going to go ahead and put this code back in here. When we update the behavior, we obviously want to do something. Um, but let's write these up real quick. We're going to want a follow behavior. And we're going to want a patrol behavior. Patrol behavior, a little bit complicated, not going to lie. Um, oh, I think I can actually delete this. I can. And I can delete this. Um, because, you know, patrolling paths is a little bit more of a complicated process. But the follow behavior simply says, well, we have a double while loop in here. While this coroutine is running, we should move towards the player with a follow speed and multiply it by times that delta time, obviously, so we can 
maintain consistent uh, movement across different frame rates. Okay, so now the patrol, a little bit more complicated. We're going to go ahead and because we can be following in whatever direction, we are first and foremost, this bit of code right here, now center it a little bit, zoom out a little bit, simply goes through and checks to see what is our closest point um, and says that should be the point that we start at, whichever one is closest to us. So if we run away to the right or to the left, the enemy will start at whatever point on its path is closest to it. You know, it's a little bit of an intuitive uh, design thing right there. Um, now, that is before we actually get into the coroutine. So this will only happen once uh, when the coroutine starts. Otherwise, we're simply doing the same thing we did to the um, uh, in our follow, except we're going to different parts on the path instead with patrol speed instead of follow speed. We then do obviously have to do a check to say, hey, if you have made it to your path point, go ahead and go to the next path point. But this is really not super important for our state machine, so I'm not going to go into it. Feel free to take a look and pick apart the code if you want, but not important for what we're doing right now. Uh, it just basically moves the uh, destination uh, further across on the um, uh, in our paths. Now, you will need a path you know, array up here before we even, before you can write this code. So ensure that you do have an array called path up there. Um, now, we have this update behavior and it's kind of the catalyst that changes states on our state machine. I'm gonna uncomment all this out because we are changing states or we were before, but we weren't actually doing anything with it. We need to, um, again, if you haven't watched the coroutine uh, video, you. I, definitely should we're going to check to see are we currently doing any behavior and if so we're going to stop it we're going to stop that coroutine this is something that wasn't in the coroutine uh, video i don't believe but essentially what's happening here is we want to stop any behavior that we are currently uh uh engaging in whether that's patrol or follow you can see that down here we're going to go ahead and start that uh start one of them because we're going to then go and say, use a switch statement, which if you don't know about switch statements, please, I implore you, go check it out. Um, they're a little bit easier than a bunch of if else statements and a little bit more efficient. Um, we're going to say, all right, well, if we just set the state to patrol, then we're going to go ahead and start the patrol coroutine and set our current behavior to that. So that way then when we eventually get into follow, our coroutine won't be null and we'll be able to stop our patrol coroutine and then same thing with our follow right we'll be able to go and say hey all right if we're coming into the follow behavior let's go ahead and start coroutine set it to follow set our or start the follow coroutine set our current behavior to it and then when and if the we get away from the bad guy they'll be able to say all right i need to stop the follow coroutine and go back to my patrol now with all this uncommented out we should be able to see i'm going to make rue I'm going to make the ground a little bit bigger because I generally have had to fall off the edge of the map da, 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 da. in order to get away from this enemy. Made him a little too fast. I'm going to make him a little slower when he's following. I'm just going to give it six. You know what? I'll make it three and I'll make it four. <clears throat> so now, oh, I did that in play mode. Of course I did. Three and four. And let's make this a little bit longer. Oh, I made it the opposite. Inverted it. Excellent. Okay. So now with that, we should be able to, with our enemy selected, see it's going around its patrol. And when I run up to it, ignore that. That's from a previous tutorial. See that it starts following and then it goes back to its path. Right? And now it's going to go to its closest patrol point and be on its merry way now obviously with enemies if you need to um uh have more complex like pathfinding you would use uh ai navigation stuff like that but this is a pretty good example in my opinion of a simple state machine you can use this obviously for all kinds of different things you can use it for is the game paused is it in a menu is it in uh are you in a car are you running can't do you have superpowers you can do all kinds of things like that and delineate it through enums and state machines to help partition out your code more and more 
But that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, please leave uh, comments or reach out to me over Discord. Thanks.